Hello, I'm Darren McGee, and today's question asks if I would discuss the closet narcissist. Now, if you like this video, if you find it helpful, please click like and please consider subscribing to my channel. But just as a reminder, this video is not a substitute for support from a mental health professional, nor is it a tool to be used to diagnose someone. Now, the closet narcissist can be quite difficult to spot and is often confused with the covert narcissist. Now, I think this is largely because a lot of the strategies, the tactics, the behaviours, they're largely the same. There's the being sensitive to criticism, there's a sense of helplessness and vulnerability, there's controlling, manipulating others through acts of guilt tripping and shaming. And I've made videos on vulnerable narcissism before if you want to check those out. But what it is that makes them difficult to spot is that with narcissism members, often this this self-absorbed kind of selfish, lacking empathy and a huge sense of entitlement. But this is all directed inwards. It's the narcissist puts themselves at the center of the universe. With closet narcissism, all of those qualities, characteristics, those traits are still there. But it is not themselves who is the center of the universe. It is someone else. The closet narcissist can be afraid of the spotlight. They can be quite subtle. So they tend to give credit for their own work, their own achievements, their qualities to someone else. They live to serve. Now, live to serve normally a grandiose narcissist in order to get their own needs met. They bask in someone else's high regard and high esteem. The one they worship is maybe a partner, um, though more often than not, commonly it's a parent now. But to them, that person, whoever they are, they are wealthy, they're intelligent, they're very attractive, they're very virtuous, they are noble, they're high up in the church, they, they do a lot of charity work. They feel good whenever the one they worship looks good, whenever they're esteemed highly. So everything they do is to make the person they worship look good. So with narcissism you often hear things like how great I am, how I was able to do this, you know, how I accomplished that, I'm so I'm so brilliant at this. With closet narcissism it sounds different. It's aren't they great? Isn't that wonderful? Isn't what they did absolutely fantastic? They are their narcissist's apologist. They're the flying monkey, the best agent they have, they're the mascot, they're the supporter, they're the cheerleader. There is a pervasive preoccupation with their idol's image, their status, their well-being and their reputation. They get their validation through association, through being involved with that person. Their self-esteem is met by living vicariously through someone else. Everything they do, every act of charity, everything they accomplish, every act of kindness is for the benefit and for the enhancement of that person they worship. Now, as I said, they can be difficult to spot. I think, however, they can be easier to spot in a relationship and for two reasons. First of all, they may be in a relationship with a grandiose narcissist themselves, so they enable the toxic behaviour. They give that narcissist everything they want. They turn a blind eye to the cheating, to the rages, to the selfishness. They are constantly promoting them, praising them to others. They take the insults, the unkind humour, the cheating is never the fault of the partner or the narcissist. It's the kid's fault, it's their work's fault, it's their parents' fault, it's even their own fault. Or it could look a little differently. They may have at one time really loved and idolised the partner, but when, as normal, the partner doesn't quite live up to the ideal version that they created, then comes out the covert narcissism to undermine, to sabotage, neglect and devalue in order to punish them. And another way to spot them in a relationship is when that person they worship, that, that their narcissist, is maybe a narcissistic parent. Now it's almost like the parent is the third person in the relationship. The parent will always know what's best. Um, Things told to them in their youth are still held as if they're true today. Now, as a teenager, they may have been told they weren't allowed to drink. So in their 30s, 40s, even 50s, they are still not drinking. They may have been told they weren't allowed to go to a certain place, maybe on holiday or to visit or whatever. Again, in their 20s, 30s, 40s, they have never, ever been to that place. If their partner ever so much as disagrees with the narcissistic parent, doesn't accept the interference in the marriage, uh, doesn't accept the unkind humour, the insults, the jokes with jags, 
they are now the villain. The partner gets punished for not worshipping that parent the way they do. So, some of the common characteristics of the closet narcissist include a lot of empty promises. Now, unless, unless it's the person that they worship, unless it's um, the person that they idolise, now, regardless of what it is they agree to with someone, they have no intention of keeping it. No intention of keeping their part of the bargain unless it benefits the person they worship somehow. And as is common with a lot of different kinds of narcissism, there is a lot of trauma in their past, but it's a trauma that's not fully understood. Now, this could look like uh, the closet narcissist is saying things like they were bullied a lot when they were younger, when they were at school. What they don't acknowledge, what they don't see, is that the bullying didn't stop when they got home. Sometimes they were actually safer in school than they were at home because regardless of how badly they were treated or are being treated by that grandiose narcissist, the closet narcissist cannot hold in their head, even for a moment, the thought of that person never doing, saying anything that was inappropriate or bad or harmful. Another common characteristic would be they lack assertiveness, just like the covert narcissist, their counterpart. They lack assertiveness, so what they will often do is they tend to gossip to others when someone upsets them, lets them down somehow, rather than just challenge them or confront them. Either that, or they can just ignore that person as if they don't exist. It could be a former friend, a family member, an ex-partner. You know, that person talks to the closet narcissist and they just look right through them. It's like they're, they're not even there. Another common characteristic would be using manipulative language. Now again, if someone has been raised by a narcissistic parent, now they've never really learned to ask for anything for fear of being humiliated, rage, rejection. So it's really difficult for them to ask for anything in adulthood. A partner might hear things like, would you like to make me some coffee? Or are you making dinner? No, they're not going to say things like, are you making coffee? Any chance I could get a cup? Or uh, do me a favour, could you make the dinner tonight? I'm a bit tired. Their esteem is so fragile, so shaky, they can't just ask for it. They, there is a fear of being told no. There is a fear the other person doesn't care about them. There's a, a fear of, of um, being ridiculed somehow. Because they have never learned to fully understand or acknowledge their own needs, they struggle to articulate them honestly and openly. And like the covert narcissist, will try to manipulate and shame others into feeling obligated to help them. So what is it makes a closet narcissist? Well, I don't think there's any one answer, but I will give you some personal experience, I suppose. Again, you think of someone being raised in a narcissistic home, okay? Um, you think of the lost child. I've made a video on the lost child before. This is the child that is hidden in plain sight. Um, never overachieving because they don't want to outshine the golden child, but never underachieving because they don't want to end up like the scapegoat. They may have been punished for getting any kind of attention, so they learned to give credit to others for their work. They, they learned that they got positive attention through others. You know, if they're okay, then I'm okay. They learned to put everybody else's needs, everybody in that cult-like family that they grew up in put their needs in front of their own. So they grow up feeling empty. There is no sense of self. They, they give up everything to appease the parents so they don't really know how to self-reflect. They lack insight and when they have no one to worship, there's no one to admire, they tend to feel bored, they feel dissatisfied. And when their partner as I said earlier, it, when their partner does not see their idol, their parent, whatever, the way they do, quite commonly, that's where we see the covert narcissist dynamics kicking into place in that relationship with the partner, the kids, and everybody else. So that's a brief outline of the closet narcissist. Now, it's the, remember, the narcissist who lives to serve and promote another narcissist. If you have any thoughts, experiences you'd like to share, by all means, please use the comment box below. There have been some interesting discussions and observations starting around these videos. If you like this video, if you find it helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel for future updates on mental health related topics. And until next time, thanks for watching.